practice for a reason. And you being in television and in that type of media world, you understand that you can't just step in front of a camera and start speaking your lines. You have to practice. And so this, I'm going to call it the luminosity phase, right? I love that word. So I just, <laughs> whether it's the right word or not, I'm not sure. But in this phase, this this fair to midland space, this is where we have the opportunity to practice. This is where we have the permission that we have granted ourselves to go through those feelings, go through that messiness. Writing this book for me, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is what I've been doing all year, it was messy. I mean, there were weeks where I literally had to go back back here into the middle of my soul to yeah. dark, dark places that I hadn't ventured down for 20 something years. And I made myself push through the heartache that I never dealt with because I knew that if I'm going to be the best version of myself in the next space, I had to let that stuff go. Yeah. And it's, it's this middle ground where we have an opportunity to practice who we want to be. You know, you don't come out walking. You have to learn how to crawl first. It's it's an opportunity for us to try on a couple different hats and say, this one fits really, really well. And then gain the courage, the internal courage to walk outside and not worry about whether anybody likes that hat on you or not. And for me, again, this this calling down of the ones that, that didn't necessarily Fit what my future started to look like, I took it as a blessing. It's creating the space to allow the better things to come in. A year ago, if anybody had told me, Amanda, you're going to be a guest on podcasts and you're going to finish your book <laughs> and you're going to do that, I would have been like, that? what are you talking about? You know, I'm in the middle of my chaotic drama. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then it all fell apart and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> maybe I do. And so for me, it's the practice, practicing who I want to be and, and then falling in love with that. It's not pretending, it's understanding. And, and it's, I'm looking at that practice as my connection with my higher, higher power is definitely more recent than some other people's. And for me, mm -hmm. I'm just really getting to know exactly where my soul sits and I'm loving every second of it. And it's it's giving me more courage, more power, more, more understanding of how I can fulfill myself before I have to worry about filling everybody else. So I love that you call it a practice. Awesome. That is that is so that is so true, is because we do, we have to practice. We have a lot of practice yeah. being who we were. I mean, you know, I have 40 some odd <laughs> years of practicing who I was, you know? Yeah. Yep. No one should just think that you're going to, you have, you're stepping into this new version of yourself and you know exactly how to conduct yourself in that new version of yourself. So I love that you give yourself that grace to practice it, but you've also said a word now a couple of times that I've used a lot, especially when it comes to writing, because I teach people how to write. I ghost write for people. A lot of, a lot of times, a lot of times it's, you know, the last book I just ghost wrote was a memoir and it was dark. There was a lot of things in it. And you ha I had to take, take my client in through some really hard things to relive them. And so you have to heal that to be able to move on. But there's yeah. so much courage that it takes to share that story, to get vulnerable. And there's so much, it's almost like therapy for yourself. It's therapy for your soul, but oh. there's so much you can do to help change the lives of others by doing that too, because we can see each other in it. So I love that you're talking about the courage it takes to get vulnerable in that space and to also heal yourself in that process. It's, that's yeah. exactly what it is. Courage. <laughs>